Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 6 here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. We have two guests for this segment. We have Vaibhav Bansal. He is a VP at Everest. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And Harpreet Makan, she is the practice director at Everest. Thank, Thank you, so you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent. So, Vaibhav, I want to start with you and just really get your thoughts. This is the end of the day here um, at Forward 6. What went on, what took place, what are some of the most interesting conversations and questions that, that you're being asked here? Yeah, so uh, I think uh, one of the most interesting conversations we have today is around uh, how AI is going to have an impact on the entire intelligent automation space. So basically how AI and automation are coming together, how they are converging. Uh, and I think often uh, uh, my, my reply to some of that is uh, taking a step back, right? Go into a bit of history of AI and automation. Uh, so if you look at AI, right? So historically, uh, AI is not new, right, by the way. So it has been there for like past 60, 70 years in some form. I think the initial, you know, pursuits in AI were more academic. In the recent years, they have become more professional, right? So that's the only difference we see. Uh, so, uh, so, so, so that's about AI. Similarly, when we talk about automation, right? So automation, uh, if we go 10 years back, right? So we had more of rule-based or script-based automation. And, you know, uh, we, we, we had this entire journey of robotic process automation or RPA. Over the last five years or so, we have seen uh, AI starting, uh, you know, to have an impact on automation. And that's, so there was already an overlap which was there. So we have, you know, productized versions of AI. Uh, like intelligent document processing and conversational AI, which are already there, right? So it's not something which is very new. It's just that uh, today, uh, you know, uh, is, is the right time, right? So it's a summer of AI. At the same time, uh, I think organizations uh, worldwide have now realized the benefits of bringing together AI and automation. Uh, so if you look at it, uh, you know, automation is more like the limbs of the body, right? Uh, whereas AI is the brain. Right, so, 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 so both need to coexist with each other, right? So if, if you just have AI, right, you can solve a small part of the problem, right? So which, which is a subset of the, maybe the entire process, right? Uh, similarly, if you have automation, right, so you could probably, you know, automate repetitive tasks, but bringing them together really brings the best out of both of them. Is so, it the summer or the spring? <laughs> I don't know, whatever you want to call it, oh, but yeah. uh, the winter is definitely gone. Because <laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> the summer, my tomato plants are this high, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> the spring, yeah. they're this high. So. Yeah, I mean, of course, there's a lot more to come, right? So uh, while, while we are talking a lot about AI, I think we're still, we have just scratched the surface, right? So of course, uh, there have been recent advances with generative AI and all coming in the last one year or so. But uh, I, I'm sure all of us have heard about, you know, artificial general intelligence, right? Which is like the North Star for AI, right? So I think there's quite some time for all of us to get there. So yeah. So <laughs> tell us more about the Everest Group. What do you guys do? What's your different roles? Uh, you have research methodologies and uh, help the audience understand more if you would. Yeah, maybe I can start. Uh, so uh, Everest Group is basically an analyst uh, firm. Uh, been around for a while, right? In early yeah. 90s, if we, I... Yeah, we've been there for more than 30 years. Yeah, early, early 90s. So, so, so we, uh, again, cover uh, research in multiple areas uh, which span across business process services, information technology services, even solutions related to pricing and all, right? So there are different service lines. So we do cover research in all these areas. At the same time, uh, we do advise our clients, uh, you know, with the consulting engagements or uh, where, where there is a specific problem solving which is not covered explicitly as a part of our research. Uh, so we, especially I and Harpreet, uh, uh, you know, represent a, a practice where we cover everything to do with automation and AI. Uh, and you know that would mean technologies such as uh, RPA, intelligent document processing, conversational AI, uh, process and task mining, uh, even process orchestration. Uh, so, so, so that that's the entire spectrum. And now, of course, with generative AI coming into picture, it's it's going to have a significant impact on all of this. 
Yeah. And as we have been covering all these different areas, I think in the last one, one and a half year, AI is again something that has been impacting the entire landscape. So the way we define this intelligent automation ecosystem, we think of it in terms of layers. So like rules-based automation or RPA is just one of those layers. There are multiple other technologies like we have mentioned, intelligent document processing, process mining, task mining, conversational AI. All of these technologies, there's a significant impact of AI. There's significant belief in the potential of AI that we are seeing. So yeah, that's what I wanted to add. And, and these layers, have they historically been point products uh, or platforms? What's the evolution of, of product to platform? Yeah, so the way we have covered this is more in terms of products, especially more defined or mature layers like RPA and AI-based automation. Whereas it comes to some newer layers like process mining and task mining, there also we see productized solution emerging. Now with all of these coming together is where the platform play is becoming prominent. We are seeing the emergence of intelligent automation platforms as a whole. And when we look at a platform as a whole, then AI ML or low code, no code becomes a key horizontal layer of that platform. So what's your fundamental methodology? Is it a combination of sort of you know, buy side research, you know, survey work, uh, d demand side research, uh, talking to companies, technology companies. Maybe you could describe sure. your methodology and maybe some of the sort of core sort of findings, if you will, of your recent research. Sure, I think I can talk about the most recent ones. So from a methodology standpoint, we follow a similar methodology for all our research. So our proprietary research, which we call as the peak metrics, therein it is a mix of supplier side, buyer side research. We speak to enterprise, we speak to providers, uh, we do surveys, we gather information from both the sides, and then do our independent analysis to arrive at the final research output. Uh, I, my team recently published process, task mining and RPA research for this year. And uh, RPA is an area that we have been covering from last seven years now. And I think one of the first analysts from to do so. So yeah, it, we've seen a massive evolution there. So the number of players that have been covered this year are close to 25 players, with obviously uh, four or five of them being the leaders in that particular matrix, the way we define, we categorize players into leaders, major contenders, and aspirants. That is the final output that we come up with. Do you size markets or not so much? You do. We do size markets. Yes. So, so what's okay. happening in the markets? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, again, I think we have been sizing markets by each of these individual areas, yeah. right? So typically across most of these areas, we see growth rates which are like 20, 25% plus growth rates, right? Uh, uh, over, over the last at least two to three years post COVID, right? So, so that, that's the growth trend which we see. Uh, I mean, I can talk about a few other uh, major trends, right? Which we see in the entire automation market today. Uh, uh, one is, of course, uh, you know, with Generative AI coming into picture this year, everything is getting disrupted, right? So, uh, especially there are areas which are more AI-based automation, such as IDP and conversational AI, right? So, which are, which are probably a bit ahead in that race, but others are not very far behind, right? So, uh, today, uh, from a supply perspective, we have almost every provider in these areas, you know, who is already integrating their solutions, existing solutions with large language models, right? So, so that's one uh, very uh, noticeable trend. Uh, apart from that, uh, again, I think the inherent need of automation, right? So that continues to be there, uh, and it's very robust. Uh, the market is still probably just 15 to 20% uh, you know, tapped. There is still a large percentage of the market which is out there, which, which needs more education and awareness about automation, right, to bring out the best outcomes. Uh, there are other enablers. Uh, uh, so, for example, today a lot of uh, you know uh, enterprises are moving to cloud uh, and uh, you know adopting software as a service solutions. So, from that perspective, it makes easier for some of the providers to offer those solutions at a relatively convenient, uh, you know, cheaper prices, and you know, ma making uh, the adoption easier. Uh, so, do you think yeah. generative AI is a headwind? or a tailwind? Is it, is it incremental or dilutive to RPA and automation? I guess you could maybe take yeah. those separately, but, right? 
but the answer however you feel is appropriate. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a very good question. I mean, in other words, sometimes, uh, you know, we put that as, is, is it more like a threat or a boon for intelligent automation? So I would say there are arguments on both sides. Uh, if if you're, you just, uh, you know, ask for a very short answer, I would say overall uh, it, it's definitely a, a boon or is it, it's, it uh, you know, it's a tailwind, right? So. Uh, but of course, we could have uh, debates on both sides. For example, you know, it could lead to disruption. It could lead to, uh, you know, it already uh, is. Uh, it, it already is. It could lead to some of the, uh, you know, mediocre players getting vanished, right? Or maybe emergence of some new gen AI native players, right? So those kind of disruptions are definitely going to be there. But I think by and large, it is going to aid automation. It's going to make existing solutions better, more accurate, more efficient. So we are going to see those kind of gains. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's going to help everyone. So that would suggest it expands the market overall, it expands the TAM overall. You would agree, I presume, yeah? Yes, I, I would agree. And just to add something to your last question, so we recently published a continuous discovery and automation playbook, and therein we did a survey with different enterprise personas. We asked the same question, how do you see AI impacting the different technologies? And we asked it like per technology to get nuances. Like, do you see AI as being core to certain technology? Or do you see AI enhancing a certain technology? Or do you see it disrupting? And we got very interesting answers. Like, for example, for RPA, it was clearly we uh, see XOC AI enhancing RPA. When it comes to technologies like intelligent document processing, they see it disrupting or transforming like at the core of it. And when it comes to some of the other technologies like process mining, task mining, again, they see it complementing very well. So this is one of the outputs that came from the enterprise survey we conducted. So when I think about some of the, you know, the great software platforms, obviously Oracle, SAP, IBM, and I don't know if IBM, great software platform, but they got a lot of software. <laughs> but ServiceNow, Salesforce, Workday, uh, Adobe, all of these companies, Snowflake, Snowflake now, Databricks, all these companies have an AI strategy. You're going to be out of business if you don't have one. Um, so my question is, how do you see customers consuming AI? And the answer is probably both, but uh, is there any research that you've done or gut feels that you have? Will they consume it more as part of a so an existing software platform, or are they going to go out and you know, tap third party LLMs, build their own, because they want to have sort of control over their own destiny. What, what do you, what do, you, do you have any research on that or sense given that you've followed the market for a number of years? Yeah, I think based on, at least my point of view, there would be actually both. Because there are enterprises who are very heavily invested in the existing landscape and let's say these systems that you talked about, these software stacks, they are expected to obviously try to find ways to use AI on top of these or in addition to these. But there are next gen or new digital age tech, uh, companies that are coming up who are not that heavily invested and they are expected to explore standalone ca use cases also. So I see a mix of both. And uh, both of these actually don't need to be mutually exclusive, yeah. right? So uh, while we have you know, some of these uh, uh, traditional product companies like Salesforce and Adobe and all those you mentioned, right? So they are coming up with their own AI enhancements or AI modules, right? So, uh, and, and they have pricing uh, which is specific to those modules also. At the same time, uh, you know, there is always a need of uh, players, uh, for example, UiPath, right? So who can help uh, enable these platforms talk to each other, right? So to, to, to be that underlying layer which connects different platforms, right? So otherwise, uh, I think it, 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 it'll be a challenge for these platforms to talk to each other. You mentioned the migration, cloud migration earlier. Yep. Uh, and, and you know, we, we all remember early days of cloud, financial services companies said, oh, that's, I'll never go into the cloud, it's not secure. Of course, CIA changed that <laughs> early on. Um, and now everybody's comfortable in the cloud. At the same time, with LLMs, First of all, if you're going to bring the, the AI to the data, a lot of the data is not in the cloud. Much of it is in video form, but other data. As well, there's concern about IP leakage. People don't want to necessarily move the data. You're seeing companies like OpenAI actually doing a lot of the training in their own supercomputer. Tesla does the same thing. So are you seeing, are you discerning any patterns in terms of, we, we know a lot's going on in the cloud, no doubt. Is there any evidence that that pendulum will swing? I think in a way, uh, like pendulum has been swinging for some time, right? So, uh, I mean, at least I know some data, I recall some data points. Uh, uh, so probably today we are at a 
stage where uh, you know more than 50% of automation solutions are already on cloud, right? So there is a significant percentage of on-premise which is still there, uh, but I think more and more organizations are realizing uh, that need to move their data to the cloud and then uh, you know appropriately have their intelligent sol uh, automation solutions over cloud. Uh, I think we have seen some innovation in some of the more regulated industries like banking, healthcare, but as you know, the solutions become more compliant to these regulations, even they are, uh, you know, uh, they, are they are taking that route. Uh, however, uh, it's not to say that, you know, this uh, transition of this shift will happen suddenly. Uh, so again, I think we, we need to probably take a slightly decoupled approach, right? So rather than, you know, just trying to have everything, on cloud and then thinking about you know using something like uh, automation and ai uh, rather uh, you know have two different approaches for what is on premise or what is more legacy versus you know what is already on cloud and what is actually ready to adopt ai and automation solutions so i think that kind of a dual strategy could help and of course in the longer term the plan should be to even shift uh, that on prem part to the cloud and you know yeah. you know this right a aws is in the fullness of time everything will be done in the cloud um, you know, companies like whatever, Dell, HPE, say, oh no, not everything will be done in the cloud, a lot will be done on-prem. Companies like UiPath don't care. <laughs> They're <laughs> licensing software. And yep. Running the cloud, running on-prem, doesn't matter to us. So, I think, I think you're right though, it has sort of, the momentum has slowed down a little bit, but you know, the thing I wonder is, will it accelerate now? Will LLMs be a, a boost? I saw a Wall Street analyst report the other day that was, they were presuming you know, significant growth in the cloud, a return to 30 plus percent cloud growth in 2024. We'll see. I mean, I, who knows what's you know, going to be in this crazy market. But, um, but when you talk to customers, there's concern, but you don't see the innovation outside of the cloud. The cloud has so much innovation, so many tools, so, many, so much optionality with, with LLMs that it you know, feels like that's going to be the place where the action is. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, and I think compared to la last maybe five years ago, I think the, the belief in, in AI is much more like higher today than it was five years ago. And I think that belief is probably pushing everybody to explore things that they were scared of or they were skeptical about. Obviously, there are still concerns. And all conversations that we have with enterprises, there are concerns about whether the IT is ready, whether their infra is ready. There are a lot of concerns that we hear. But there is still that inherent uh, wish to, to explore all those solutions and to achieve that potential. So I think that that is something that is expected to take the kind of growth that, uh, that is being predicted. Yeah, that's why I was asking if it's spring or summer, because <laughs> uh, it's, right, it's, it's crazy right now. And there's so much action, a lot of VC you know, investment. Uh, and, and, and yet, when you look at what people are actually doing, now maybe it's different for automation, but what people are really doing with AI, it seems to be all the stuff that we're doing with AI. You know, we're summarizing documents, we're ideating, you know, maybe getting help, some help writing code, right? Um, and so, a lot of experimenting. What are your thoughts on how long that will last before there's like a clear, and just specifically in the context of automation, because that's your wheelhouse. Before, because right now, there's, there's actually activity going on, there's spending, and it's probably taking away from other areas. I think you probably yeah. see that. It's not like IT budgets are growing. They're right. not, right? So as AI spending increases, it's coming out of other buckets. How long do you think it will take before we actually either see definitive business value getting dropped to the income statement, or, or CEOs are going to pull, and CFOs are going to pull the plug, and not pull the plug, but dial down? Yeah, no, valid, valid question. Uh, in fact, uh, the recent wave of AI, which is kind of spurred by generative AI, right? So here, at least in this year, right, 2023, we have seen a lot of experimentation and POCs and pilots, all of those happening, a lot of enterprises experimenting. So you're right, right? In a way, most of that budget was not planned because nobody had thought about this at the beginning or at the end of the last year, right? So this, uh, this humongous impact, right? So. Uh, so yes, while while you're saying there is a lot of investment, a lot of it is unplanned. Now, as we move into the next year, and we are actually around the time of the year when you know companies are planning for their budgeting and all. So we we do see you know planned investments getting into Gen AI. Uh, 
it could either be taken out of their existing AI budgets or probably there is a new budget which is allocated for Gen AI. So in fact, like if you ask me, I would say the investment is actually going to increase further, right? So we, we are, I agree, we are at like a hype, right? So we are still at the peak of hype with respect to generative AI, but at least for the next one year, I would say there would be a lot more investment which will be happening in this space. Uh, we have still not witnessed a lot of, uh, you know, impact or result coming out of this. So probably it takes another six to 12 months for this to play out in the market and for, you know, organizations to really form a point of view around what's the real impact. And then maybe it's that decision time which you're talking and, about. And then have measurable, sort yeah. of obvious I impact. Do you think that will come from, it's probably a combination, but where do you think it'll mostly come from? Labor savings? Your favorite topic? <laughs> or will there be revenue generation yeah no again again a valid question i think uh, like all i would say automation and ai uh, the major impact is going to be on labor savings or productivity i i wouldn't deny that of course uh, the impact uh, there, at the same time there will be revenue you know enhancing use cases especially in some of the areas like marketing and sales you know where you could use gen ai to create a lot of uh, you know opportunities a cross sell and upsell kind of opportunity so ultimately it could lead to those as well, but uh, I think probably 70, 80% would still be labor savings. Having said that, I think today uh, we are still restricted. Uh, most of us are still thinking about use cases which existed earlier and how generative AI is going to have an impact on those use cases. So that's why we are still thinking of incremental benefits. A lot of thinking still hasn't happened on net new use cases, you know, which would emerge just because of generative AI. So probably those are the places where we could see greater revenue generation opportunities. The saddest use case, this is, ter this is a terrible joke, it's really not a joke, it's true, but the, the, the use case of writing better phishing emails is definitely helping. <laughs> the hackers, the hackers. Are, the hackers are on revenue it. revenue generating. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I'm, I'm laughing, but I'm crying yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's the other side of AI. Yeah. <laughs> Vaibhav and Harpreet, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, a really fascinating conversation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you for having us. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. That wraps up day one of theCUBE's live coverage of Forward Six. We'll be back here tomorrow and we'll see you next time.